in addition to the more routine process types we have seen so far, such as linear, flexible, or intermediate flow processes, another important process type is a project process. A project can be thought of as a set of activities that typically delivers a one-time, non-routine outcome. In that sense, a project process shares some of the low volume and high customization characteristics of a flexible flow process. A project process, however, tends to be a much more complex undertaking. It involves the coordination of several interconnected activities, as well as several individuals, typically from different parts of the organization. It often involves a long drawn out time period and has a defined starting point and an ending point. During this time period, several resources are allocated to the project, which get freed up at the project completion. Some organizations, or some parts of an organization, tend to engage a lot in project processes. For example, for a wedding planner, every new customer is a new project. For a building contractor, too, every new building is a new project, although some projects might be more cookie-cutter than others. An R&D department might frequently engage in new product development projects. A continuous improvement effort might engage in several process improvement projects. Let us say you are not working in such a part of the organization, so you are really not involved with project processes. Your job involves more routine processes. One day, your boss calls you and asks you to serve on a task force, which is charged with looking into customer complaints about something. The customer complaints are multifaceted, but primarily have to do with your department, so you are given the lead. You have two weeks to come up with a report. You have to coordinate with Bill from customer service, Sarah from Accounting, Mike from Marketing, Kelly from Finance, and Anne from IT. Your boss didn't use the word project, but is this not a project? Meanwhile, you will continue to work on your routine processes as well, but your boss has promised to cut you some slack there. Yeah, right, empty promises once again. Most of us are bound to be involved in such projects at different times. Not to mention the numerous projects around the house. Painting a room, installing a new smoke detector, staining the deck, etc. How should this project be structured? One way to do this is using a functional project structure. First, you break down the project into different activities. Then you identify the activities that are related to each functional department and distribute them. The customer service related activities go to Bill, the accounting related activities go to Sarah, and so on. At the end of two weeks, you simply put all the pieces together and type up your report. Easy as pie. Do you really expect things to work out so smoothly? Just in case you hadn't heard before, Sarah from Accounting can't stand the sight of Mike from Marketing. She thinks he's all show and no substance. He can't tolerate her either and thinks she should not just stare at her feet while talking to others. Of course, Mike also has a problem with Kelly from Finance. On more than one occasion, she has made snide remarks about his poor Excel skills. And did you know? Kelly recently turned down yet another funding request from Bill in customer service. She seems to have made it a habit. He thinks very highly of her, of course. Bill also has a long-standing feud with Anne from IT. He asked for a certain software to be installed on his laptop, but Anne is dragging her feet on configuring it. Actually, everyone has a problem with Anne. When was the last time the IT people ever showed up to help you when your computer blew up in your face? Let's say we wave a magic wand and take away all the personality conflicts. The fact of the matter is, we still have a diverse group of people from different backgrounds who don't even speak the same language. One speaks accounting ease, another speaks marketing ease, another finance ease, 
and so on. Moreover, each person also has several other responsibilities piled on them. At the end of the day, something has got to give. What are the odds this project is going to be high on their priority list? Now that is the big problem with the functional project structure. This project is not going anywhere in a hurry. To avoid this scenario, let us say we convince top management to release all the people from their routine responsibilities. This project is so important that we don't want anything to stand in the way of its success. We are going to use a pure project structure. So we take you and these five other people and put you all in a room, lock it up, and throw away the key for the next two weeks. Sort of like a sequestered jury. You will have no distractions. If your boss calls you, ignore it. If you get an email, put it on auto response. No excuses now. The first day goes by with everyone sitting in their own corner, working on their piece of the project. You try your hand at management by walking around. Mingle and make small conversation. How's everything going? Fine? Good, good. Being a project manager is so easy. On the second day, Kelly from Finance asks Mike from Marketing for some market forecast numbers to plug into a spreadsheet. Mike doesn't have them ready. Why didn't you tell me yesterday? I usually need at least two days notice for such things. Kelly is flustered. She was only trying to hurry up her spreadsheet because Anne from Accounting needed something in a hurry. That is when you intervene and sweet talk Mike into cooperating. Mike quickly puts together the numbers, but Kelly is struggling to find the relevant numbers in Mike's spreadsheet. She has to jump from tab 1 to tab 52 and back. Also, she is astounded that the important numbers are not highlighted in bold. That is common practice in the finance department. Mike's response is simple. That's the way we do things in the marketing department. While Kelly and Mike are having their verbal duel, the rest of the team takes an entertainment break. On the third day, it's Bill's turn to accost Mike for some deliverables. Mike doesn't have them ready. He blames it on Kelly. But that was yesterday. You've had a whole day since then, and this should only take a couple of hours. Mike's response is simple. That's the way we do things in the marketing department. Pretty soon, Bill and Mike are duking it out in the center ring. Kelly is cheering Bill, while the others are placing side bets. As you can see, our group started out with the forming stage and has now reached the storming stage. At this point, you decide to initiate the norming stage. You call a team huddle. Clearly, everyone has their different ways of doing things, but they need to come to some common norms regarding how they will work together. Everybody will now give Mike ample notice, but only one day, not two days. Mike will put all the important numbers on tabs 1 and 2, but will not highlight them in bold. And so on. So we all hate each other, but let's at least pretend to be civilized. It's only until the end of next week. Soon, we transition into the performing stage. By the end of week 2, we have made great progress. Kelly walks up to Mike and offers to help him with some spreadsheet formulas. He, in turn, offers to help her with formatting her PowerPoint slides. Bill heads out the door and offers to get everyone coffee and donuts. I can't believe my eyes. Is this the same team? Maybe Kelly is really planning to sabotage Mike's spreadsheet to make him look like an idiot. And do you really trust Bill not to spit into the coffee? No, they've really transformed. The project is a great success, and everyone gets a pat on the back from top management. A pure project structure can produce great results. However, it required the people to be dedicated to this one project. That is often not an efficient utilization of our resources, or even feasible in many situations. We would like the efficiency of the functional project structure 
together with the effectiveness of the pure project structure. A middle ground is found in the matrix project structure. Here, the team members remain in their functional departments and work on other things besides this project also. They report to two bosses, one being their functional boss and the other being you, the project manager. So now here is Mike sitting in the marketing department, just a couple of steps away from his functional boss. He is also reporting to you over the next two weeks for five hours each day. Meanwhile, his functional boss is juggling 43 fireballs this week and tosses a couple of them towards Mike. Mike tries to dodge them, saying he has to work on this project, but his boss is not listening. Mike has to make a choice on what he will do today. You lose. You want to complain about Mike to his boss? Be my guest. That boss is the one who caused the problem in the first place. Think about what that means. At any particular level in an organization's hierarchy, there is a certain level of responsibility involved. To match that level of responsibility, a corresponding level of authority is also provided. As a project manager, you are responsible for the project's outcome. If something doesn't work out, everyone will point at you. Correspondingly, you have been granted authority over Mike for five hours each day. But Mike is still thumbing his nose at you. How is that? Your authority is only on paper. That is often the nature of a project manager's job. You have a lot of responsibility, but your authority is theoretical. How are you going to get that requisite authority? Only by being highly persuasive. You need to persuade Mike, as well as Mike's boss. Likewise, Think about persuading everyone else on your team, as well as their bosses. Clearly, people skills are hugely important in project management. In addition, the fact that you were even considered for this role implies that you must have strong expertise in your own functional area. But is that all it takes? Consider this situation. When Mike talks in his marketing ease jargon, and tells you that such and such a report will take three days, is he pulling a fast one? Too bad for him. You know enough marketing ease to keep him in check. When Sarah speaks her accounting ease, only Kelly with her financee skills can understand her somewhat. But Mike, Bill, and Anne are totally lost. Who is going to be the interpreter? Yes, you. And when Anne speaks her ITEs, everyone looks to you for interpreting. And when Bill speaks his customer services, you are called in once again. So as a project manager, not only do you need strong expertise in your own functional area, but you had better have pretty good cross-functional skills as well.